yes people welcome to the blunt bunny where i speak my mind and you can say yours it is one of those days where i'm just going to talk about two arsenal players one in lamti and one in balogun if you're an arsenal fan i want you to just spare me a few minutes to listen to this we probably have seen news and if you haven't seen the news they're saying that lamti who is on the screen right now is under the radar of Mikel ateta and it's under the radar of arsenal football club is this the missing link in the right back because now they're saying that Bellerin is probably going to be leaving at the end of the season. Is every Arsenal fan happy? What do you think about this news? Do you think it's actually going to happen or is it just a hoax or is it just a false news? Every single Arsenal fan has been clamoring about Lamptey. Maybe not every single Arsenal fan, but most Arsenal fans have been clamoring about Lamptey as a replacement. Ever since Lauren left, have we ever really had a proper, proper replacement? This is a question for you all. I don't know. We had Sagna, yes, but was it very, very good? Or was he very, very good rather for a long time? Was Eboye very good for a long time? I don't know, people. This is the question. Do you think this guy has what it takes to be that missing link in the right back for a very long time, people? What do you guys think? I'm happy about the prospect of this happening. I don't know about you, but I think this guy might probably be the missing link. Yes, he's playing for Brighton. They're not all that. They're not one of the top teams in the world. They're not one of the top teams in England. But you see a quality player when you see one. Do you know what I mean? Or you know a quality player when you see one. And this whole rumor was about Bellerin going to PSG. Some say he might be going to Juventus. Some say that Barcelona is also keeping, keeping some tabs on him. I don't know how true those things are. And this is not about Bellerin. Really, I don't want to talk about Bellerin here. But it has to be mentioned because right now he's the first choice right back. So there's a reason why we're looking for someone to replace him. So yes, somehow I have to mention him, even if I don't want to talk about him. But are you very happy about the prospect? I want to hear your opinions about this. Listen, I'm just going to say my piece about Lamptey. I feel Lamptey is a wonderful player. He's a wonderful talent. I've seen what he can do on a few occasions or a few games I've watched Brighton play. He looks a decent player that has a lot of brain work and footwork when moving forward or even when defending. He seems to be a very intelligent player in my opinion. And I'm thinking we might be able to get him for cheap. But we all know that when Arsenal gets into the battles for transfer, people put the prices really, really up. They heighten it because they know it's Arsenal. I'm sorry, but you know, that's just Arsenal. Have you ever forgotten? 4 million? No, 40 million and one pound? We became ridiculous back then, if you guys remember. So, listen, it's not going to be surprising if they, you know, up um, the price for this guy or evaluate him over what he's actually valued for. But listen, if he's someone we're going for, it looks as if Arteta wants him, and I'm going to go for it. The next player I want to talk about is this dude right here, Balogun. Have you guys had the news that this guy is demanding for 40 million? Actually, it's 40,000. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm just kidding, guys. It's 40,000 per week. That's probably going to be higher than what Emil Smith Rowe and Saka are earning. So, the question right now is before you guys start raining all the insults on him, one thing I'm going to say is every single person is entitled to negotiate a good deal. That's life. If you're going to a business, if you have the opportunity to be able to get a good deal, you ask for it. That's that. So, don't blame the guy for doing that. And secondly, he's got an agent. So his agent is probably the one doing all this. So before you start putting the blame on this young guy, on this young lad, you need to realize that he's got an agent doing the job for him. So there's a high chance that the agent is the one pulling the strings and doing all the dirty work when it comes to transfer negotiations. The third thing you have to think about is maybe, just maybe, this guy really, really, really evaluates himself. Maybe he thinks highly of himself. Maybe he has this Ibrahimovic aura. I'm not saying he's like Ibrahimovic before you actually read this wrongly all i'm trying to say is maybe he feels he's better than many of the players in arsenal right now it is possible but one thing people should understand and one thing you need to understand is you need to learn how to walk before you can fly you need to learn how to crawl before you can walk so he needs to put at the back of his mind so listen he could be better than many of the players right now in arsenal football club it's very possible but what i'm saying is he needs to take it easy his agent needs to take it easy I don't want to lose this guy because I think he's a wonderful talent. I don't know about you guys, but I think he's a really, really wonderful talent, this guy, Palogun. I love him. I've seen the few games he's played 
in the Europa. He's looked very, very decent. Right now, in Keita, he's not even making the squad anymore. I think this guy is one talent we shouldn't lose. And that's one of the reasons they're trying to keep hold of him. The negotiation is going on, but 40,000 is a bit ridiculous for someone that's just coming from the academy, has not really had first in football in his career. So I really don't know what his agent is smoking, but the agent needs to be a bit careful about that. But one thing is for sure, I don't want this guy to be the next Gnabry. That's it from me, folks. It's your boy here, the Blum Pony. Lovers, we be lovers. And haters, we be haters. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Bye.